This is a great beginner's course to learn the basics of backend development by building a CRUD API with Node, Express, and MongoDB. Basically the Mern stack without the err. Harris Iftikhar created this course. He is a popular instructor and experienced developer. Today we're going to be building a complete RESTful CRUD API from scratch using Node.js, Express, and MongoDB. So over here we're in Visual Studio Code, make sure you have it downloaded, I already have it. And you also make sure you have Node.js installed. So just go to Node.js.org and install this latest support version and then just click on all the installation steps and once you have it, you could test it out using CMD and just type in the following. You could just say Node hyphen hyphen version and this should tell you whether you have node installed or not and now once we have everything ready we can now go into our project so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a simple crud app folder over here and in here what we're going to do is we're going to open up cmd so just go here and just type in cmd and go in this and you could just type in code and dot this would open up into that same directory so now we have everything ready okay so now what we're going to do first of all here is I'm going to zoom in a little and I'm going to actually uh, do the following first of all uh, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the terminal using control and back tick is the shortcut key and over here you could have the command specified so the first one you want to do is you want to type in init hyphen y so npm init hyphen y to initialize uh, some package.json now you could see that this has been written and if you open up you could see that this is the package.json file over here and it has the name which is simple crud app it got from my folder name so you could see over here after that you could see if I put it on the right side over here and just open this up um, or maybe my folder on the left side so let me just open that up and put that uh, over here so let's let's do like this now you can see in the version is 1.0.0 and then the description is nothing and then the main is index.js and then we have the scripts so we have right now just test and right now there's nothing here and then only echo error no uh, test specified and then exit one keywords are an empty list an author is you know nothing and then license is isc so what we're going to do is now we have all of this done we can now uh, basically create our um, server.js file which is going to be inside of this place so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this into some a little maximum screen and over here I'm going to create a new file which is going to be called index.js right main index.js so this is going to be actually the brain of our uh, backend so over here this is the index.js file and make sure like uh, you just created it now if you want to you know write anything like suppose console console.log and you just say let's suppose hello there now if I if I write this right I want to actually run it to run it you could actually use that same terminal and if you just type in node and then you say index.js now one second I didn't save it over here so you, you see now it's saved the circle is gone and when I do this you can see that it's running but what I want to do is I want to actually use package.json to use this uh, file. So to do that, all I have to go is within this, um, you know, within this file, which is in the scripts, uh, and then it has this object, which has test. What you could do is you could just add in comma and just add in one more, which is going to be called serve. And the value to this would be node, and then we'd have index.js, all right? So this is going to be for uh, now specifically this command. Now, if I just have go back to my terminal and say npm run serve, it would still run this exact file because I actually told package.json that whenever I use the serve, npm run serve, it should run that command. So you can see there, hello there has been run. Okay, and then you can see over here that simple CRUD app and then node index.js. Basically, it, it did the same command that we did before, node index.js, and it ran this command, and you can see the results over there. Really nice so far. So now what we want to do is, now that we have our package.js on and index.js, we want now to install our framework, which is going to be expressed for the backend. So let's just go to the website, and it's actually going to be called... Um, we have to go to the npmjs.com website and you could see over here there's every single thing that you need to know about uh, npm uh, dependencies and uh, you know libraries so what you could do is over here you could have the express framework just typed in if you type in express and press search what's going to happen is that it's going to give you 
this exact match. So when I'm going to click on this, you could see this is the official Express framework, which is actually going to be used to build our Node API server. And that's why we're now we just created uh, this, but we have to create this Node API server. So over here, you could see that you could use this command to install this. So just copy this from the clipboard. And now you could go back to this Visual Studio code and make sure you just right click here and, you know, um, it should uh, press enter and then you know it would install express now once you see you could see node modules folder uh, populated and also a package lock uh, json so you can see package-lock.json over here existing. And what uh, one more important thing that you saw over here is this node modules. So this node modules will contain all of the dependencies and libraries that we'll be installing within our application. Uh, but right at the moment, if you go to the package.json file now, you'll see that in the dependencies we have Express and that means we have installed Express successfully. So that's amazing. Now we have Express in our application, we could actually use its boilerplate code to test it out whether it's working or not. So to go in there and you just go in here and you can see this is const Express, require Express, and then this initialize the app. And then what you could do is you could just uh, call this hello and then you could essentially do this. So I'm gonna copy these two lines up here and I'm gonna go and replace this with this. So I'm gonna have const express is going to require express and over here we have app and we have express so right after this is what we're going to do is we're going to just try to uh we're just going to try to uh run this so running it is pretty simple and simple easy all we got to do is you know we're going to try to listen it so we're going to say listen for which port so we'll say by default we'll say 3000 port and we'll say you know, for that particular port, what you have to do is you have to console.log, one minute, so console.log. Now, you might be seeing that there's a lot of things going on here. I have Copilot, and that's why, uh, you know, it's giving me suggestions. So now we could see over here, server is running on port 3000 when I press tab. It just auto completes it. So now we could see that app.listen 3000, and then you could see whenever I go to this 3000, it should have this message on the console screen. So if we want to do this and you want to see it so let's just go and you know visit so but before that if uh what we have to do is we have to uh run this application so right now it's uh app.listen and uh you know it's gonna now say server is running on port 3000 so we're gonna do npm run serve again so npm run uh serve and if you could see it you can see server is running on port 3000, which is awesome. Now our, this uh, node express uh, backend is running on port 3000, which is fantastic. So right here, right after this, and we're going to say app.get. And we'll have this forward slash, right? And in here we have request and response. Now these are two things. Whatever the client sends to the uh, server is the request and whatever response comes back from the server is basically the response rest so uh, the client is basically on the browser and I'll show and explain everything if you're not following along right now so if you could see over here um, I actually had app.get and then over here we had the slash and over here we had requ request and response now over here we have this bracket right but we forgot to close this round bracket which is right here and now this is all complete but what we want to do is that whenever we visit this default page we want to throw out a response from the server right from our server saying response.send and we'll say uh hello and then we'll say hello from node api if i do this this means that the response is coming from the node api and this is going to appear if we run this uh, you know, on, on our machine. So essentially, if we go to the localhost port 3000, it would work. So let me go here and then you could just type in localhost and then we say port 3000. Um, and you'll see that right now it's not, uh, it cannot get it, the thing. So we had to basically turn off our server whenever we make changes and then we have to run npm run serve again because I actually added what I had was just server is running on port 3000. So once everything was there um, and you know this hello from node API with the slash this is what the response is sending but this is just on the console screen. So now if I run this you'll see this is on the console screen which is this one but this is coming from the node API. 
and this should come uh, through our browser or something. So if I go and visit this port 3000 on localhost, there's essentially you could go here and you, basically if you refresh the page with localhost port 3000, you'll see hello from Node API. The response that's coming back from Node API. This is amazing. And if you want to see it through Thunder Client or something, just type in HTTP and then call in two forward slashes localhost port 3000. And then if you do this, you'll have to make sure you have get and when you press send, you'll see that the status is 200, means it's okay. And then you'll see the size 19 bytes, my, uh, time which is two milliseconds, and the message, hello from Node API, which is a success. Now these are some tools that we could use to test our APIs, which is ThunderClient, a, a really popular extension in Node.js, which is highly recommended. You could also go and test out using Insomnia. So we're gonna go to Insomnia. Uh, it's a software, so insomnia.rest. If you go there, this is, uh, the website that uh, essentially design, debug, and test APIs locally or in the cloud. So get started for free. Make sure you select this one, which is $0 per month. And you could actually uh, continue with your Google account. Uh, we could subscribe to the free plan and just say subscribe. You are one step away from improving your API. And then we could actually get started with Insomnia to get started debugging and testing API, download the latest Insomnia desktop application. So we'll just click on desktop for uh, application for Windows or download for Windows. And over here, we're gonna click on this. It's essentially gonna download this Insomnia software. And also there's one more software which is called Postman. So if you go to postman.com, you'll have this other software that you could use to test APIs. And essentially you could sign in or create an account for here as well. So over here, essentially, you could use for Windows. So you could just download the 64-bit here, and this is downloading as well. So that's great. Essentially, you could also, uh, you know, sign up your, with your account. It really doesn't matter. Uh, perfect. So you could just allow access, and this is your Postman interface. All right. So it's pretty similar and I'm gonna explain this throughout this video, so don't worry. This is just how Postman looks like. And also, uh, we're waiting for the last one, which is Insomnia. So when I click on Insomnia, you'll see this uh, pop up. So we'll just wait until this is done. And once it's done, you could say, uh, welcome to Insomnia, the new version is the biggest one ever notable features and these are some of the new features now we continue keep uh, storing locally in local vault and enable cloud sync and secure cloud so one to one collaboration with cloud sync now available but we're going to keep storing locally in local vault we could also now uh, sign in so we could actually just uh, continue with our google account once you do you could go back hi coding cleverly and then you're back so authorizing Insomnia, and now you're back to Insomnia. So this is your personal workspace, and this is how Insomnia looks like. Awesome. So now that we have all of this out of the way, we can actually test our uh, you know, API. So if I test it, it's pretty simple. We could go and you know to that Thunder client, and you see, remember this test that we've done, exact same URL, you just copy, and you go into Insomnia. You could actually go over here and this is your you know, personal project, and you say new collection, new document, and what we say is new, okay. So we say my collection, or we'll say node API. And over here, we're gonna create that. Once we're created, we created that node API, we could add some, uh, you know, APIs here. So we have an, uh, you know, add a, add a new folder and we could call it you know get and then we just create this folder and in here we could just have http request and just paste in this and paste it from here and then you basically have the get option selected and you click on send once you do that you can see hello from node api this is perfect now you can see that this is working and this is our get so we have this new request we could rename this as well so we have this new uh, uh we could just rename this and we could say this as uh, get API, all right? And then we could just rename it. And there you go. This is our now uh, first one. So that's amazing. Uh, this is how it works on Insomnia and we're gonna keep moving on forward with this. Perfect. 
So right after you know testing it out through Insomnia, we're gonna actually now have to go and download a few important things. One thing is we make sure you have Git Bash because we're gonna be actually using uh, things that we don't wanna actually include. So the first thing is we don't want node modules, right? So we use dot git ignore. And for this purpose, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to downloads and you're gonna go to git bash. If you go to git bash, you'll see this one. And you'll have to download for Windows over here and then also the installation step and everything. And once you do, you'll have to include it into the path, just click on next and everything. And then if you go and uh, want to check if you have git you could just say git hyphen hyphen version and this should tell you whether you have git installed or not so that's perfect after that you could go back here and you could just into the um, node modules you could just add in you know into the git ignore you could add in node underscore modules this means that this is not going to be included when it's going to be deployed on um, you know, it's basically going to be pushed to the repo, so it doesn't include a node modules folder, which is pretty bulky with so many things. And now uh, we're we're done with that, and now uh, we have to do one more important thing, and this is basically uh, something very important to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, you know show the screen. We don't, uh, you know, we don't have a mechanism of when changing anything. So suppose if I say hello. Uh, hello from node api uh for uh you know hello from node api server if i do this I go try to uh, i mean if i try to go back and see the uh, and i see the changes so i'm gonna have to remove all of this and if i try to see this uh you know reflection i try to refresh it but i don't see any change from here and the problem is that i have to turn off the server and constantly restart it whenever I make a change. And then I could refresh the page and you'll see that change. But this is not great. We want to have this kind of mechanism that allows us to do this automatically. And that's why uh, Nodemon comes in. So we turn off our server and we install Nodemon. So what we type in is npm i, we have Nodemon and then a hyphen d. And if I do this, you could go and see that this would install Nodemon and you could see where I uh, brought this up from. If I go to npmjs.com and if I type in node mon and if I search, you'll see this one exact mass simple monitor script for use during development of a node.js app. If I click on this, you'll see this is how you install it npm i node mon and that's what exactly what we did, but we did hyphen d. Um, so once we did that, now what you could see is you could actually install it globally or you could also install it you know, in a dev development part. So now you could actually verify whether you have it installed using in the package.json. You'll see Nodemon is in the dev dependencies, which is perfect. We still have Express in the dependencies. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to just put it into the script. So index. Uh, so essentially in the package.json where the serve was, right? So you're going to add another one. So over here, we're going to have the development. And in here, we're going to say Nodemon. So I'm going to ask nodeman and we'll say index.js. This means now automatically it will reflect the changes. And we don't have to now type in npm run server, but we can now have npm run dev. And when we do this, it's right now server is running on port 3000. And you could see right now, this is how my, you know, my response looks like. But now, even if I do any kind of change, it's going to be reflected and it's going to show that, you know, the server is going to restart. So let's see if I add the uh, hello from node API server uh, and we say updated. And if I, you could see now what's happening is I didn't save anything right now. The file isn't saved. But when I press control S, you can see the server it's restarting due to changes and then starting node index.js. And then you can see it restarted. And then you can see over here that I didn't refresh this browser page, but when I do, you could see that the refreshed uh, result came here, which is perfect now. Right after this success, now we're gonna actually try to connect a MongoDB database to our Node.js backend. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to mongodb.com. So we're gonna go to mongodb.com. So mongodb.com slash Atlas. If you go here, you'll have to sign in with an account. So I'm gonna go here and make sure you, it loads up. We'll sign in and then you can see MongoDB Atlas and over here we could sign in. You could use your email address. I'm going to use Google OAuth 
uh, and I've implemented Google OAuth in one of my videos on my channel. So if you want to see how this is implemented using Next.js or even JavaScript or even MERN, I could have a video uh, available and you'll you'll see that process. So now you could see over here, I already had my MongoDB created, but for you guys, you'll have no projects. So you can see that I have a couple of projects going on here. So what we're going to see is we could just go and click on this button over here and say new project. And once we have a new project, you know, we'll be introduced with some basic things and we'll just have to set up. So now you can see over here, we have the name of the project. So you could just call it anything you want. I'll call it node API. All right, so now when we have this is uh, created, we go next and we say add members and set permissions. So we'll just give ourselves the uh, you know permission and we'll say create project. So once we do this, it's gonna create a project for us. And now you'll see loading homepage. Now it says create a deployment. So what we do is create and we'll have to go and deploy your database. So we're gonna have M0, which is the free one. AWS is good, uh, Mumbai is okay, and over here, we'll have the name of the cluster. You can name it anything you want. I'll call it mine as backend uh, DP. It really doesn't matter. You could just call it anything you want. And now over here we have, uh, you know, create. So after that, you know, it's asking me what are the bicycles here? I don't see any bicycle to be honest. Um, so I'm just going to skip it. And over here you can see motorcycle. So this is motorcycle all over here. Okay, great. So now we have that. You can see over here, how would you like to authenticate your authentic uh, connection? So security quick start, it's basically username and password. We could add in our own username and password. So I'm just going to have admin or you could just have simply uh, this one and you could have your password set. So, you know, you could actually update it yourselves, but you know, I'm just going to have this password saved somewhere. So it's important to save your password somewhere. So I'm just going to paste it right here and you'll see that later on we'll actually use it. So we'll just create user. And then after that, we have this uh, username. So we could just save this username as well. Essentially it's going to be in the connection string, but I'm just adding it anyways. So I'll just put it over here. So right, right here. Okay. So now that we have all of that, we could go about down here um, and we have my local environment and over here we have IP address. So connection, this is my IP address, but we want to allow it to access from anywhere on any device. So we say 0.0.0.0 and then we could say allow from anywhere. Now this is, uh, you know, um, not a compulsory description you could write anything you want and this IP address just had to add that and now when you do this you press add entry and this allows you to uh, uh, you know add this IP access uh, list you know IP access list is updated with this particular thing and then you could just finish and close congratulations on setting up access rules we go to overview and now we will be able to see our database that's uh, backend DB, which is good. Now you could do is you could go to the database part here and over here we'll have to go to connect and over here we'll have to go to drivers or, you know, connect to your application. So basically you just go to drivers, access your Atlas data using MongoDB's native drivers. So over here we could do is Node.js and 5.5 or later, just get the latest one. NPM install MongoDB, which is very important. So let's go in first turn off our server. So we'll just have this turned off. And then what we do is we just essentially have this in npm install MongoDB. This will install MongoDB for us. And once it's done, you know, we could have this uh, connection string. So this connection string is the thing that we need. So let's go back here into our application. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, try to uh, access this. So to do this, it's pretty easy and pretty simple. What we do is we go to um, index.js and over here we have to import mongoose. So if I go here, you will uh, um, into that, you know, there's a dependency library which is called mongoose. And if you go to this uh, npm.js, so basically npm.js.com, if you type in mongoose, this is the dependency DB ODM. So it allows you to access MongoDB pretty easily. So just install this npm i mongoose and we'll just go back here and we'll just paste this in here. So now we could have mongoose there as well. Now you could see over here, um, after installing uh, mongoose, you could have, you know, this thing, which is const mong mongoose is equal to require mongoose. And then after that, we have ES6, um, you know, 
essentially you could use it like this as well import mongoose from him so uh you know you could use any way you want um so i'm actually going to use this one so i'm going to put it right there and once we have mongoose we could have now the part to just add it so this is the way we could connect the db so we have over here uh this is the exact way to connect it so we basically say mongoose.connect and we have the connection string and then you know we allow things like that so let's go back here uh, i don't know why this is there so we'll just leave it like that and we'll go back here and now in here what we're going to do is we're going to have we're going to have um mongoose so mongoose dot connect and then we'll put in the connection string here so connection string you already ha uh you know that i already have it so it's in my clipboard okay so So it's in my clipboard, which is this thing. And no, no. It's essentially this is the connection string. Now, let's look at this a little more deeply. This is the connection string that was copied from MongoDB. You can see this is my username. And over here, they gave me a section to add my password. So remember that password that we saved? You could actually just copy this one and just override it with this one. So, you know, paste it right here done now after that we have at backend db so this was our you know um cluster name that we created and then over here we have um slash and right here mongodb.net slash we're gonna add anything over here so we could just call it as our co uh, collection name so i'm just gonna call it node um hyphen api so i'm just gonna call it like this this is our collection name and right after that we have question and then Right after that, we have question, and then we have retry re writes is equal to true, and then we have n uh, w is equal to majority. So that's essentially it. Um, and we could have this in a new line and say dot connect. So dot connect, and then when it's connected, you could have a response that says, if it's connected, you could say connected to the database, all right? And then if it's not connected you could say dot catch and then you could have this you know the same stuff so essentially you could have uh console.log connection failed so this is how we're going to connect to the database let's see the file is saved let's run the npm run dev and let's see if we are connected to the database or not and running and connected to the database. So server is running on port 3000 and we are connected to the database. Now, this is really good, but the best way to actually, uh, you know, go around this is, you can see that first of all, we want our uh, database connected and then we want the server to be running. The database connected and then we have servers running on port 3000. So that's basically uh, the way to go. Now let's just refresh and turn off the server and restart it again. So npm run dev. So you can see right now we have connected to database and then server is running on port 3000. It's just another way to do it. It's totally fine if you want to do the other way, but I actually first tried to connect to the database and then, you know, uh, we tried to run our server. Now that we have our database fully connected, we want actually a model. And a model is essentially something that we could use to store data into our database. And we wanna store some products, all right? So everything that you wanna store, that has to be a model of some kind that our Node.js application could use, and then you could use it to send it to the database so that it could store it there. So what we have to do is right here, we have to create a model. So let's go here and we could use uh, close all. And then right here, you could just cl click on this to collapse everything. And then after that, over here, you could just create a, um, you know, essentially a folder here. So we could just create a folder inside of this directory and we could call this as models. So models. And then in here, we could create our model and we have a particular naming convention and I could, and I could say product. So dot model dot JS. If I use this naming convention, it's still all right. And this is just good to remember, like this is the model. So we're going to use mongoose to create our uh, model. So mongoose, uh, is equal to require mongoose 
cost mongoose is going to require mongoose and then over here we're going to use our pro uh, you know product schema we're going to create so we're going to say product schema is equal to mongoose dot schema and in here we have uh, essentially this stuff okay and this is the thing that we have to put in so over here um, okay so over here we have this and I just want to make sure that this is the object and in here it's going to contain everything so like this so over here we are going to have either name all right so we're going to have name and then we could have uh you know something like type and we could say you know it's a string type name of the product and then we could have a required field and we could say that it's true all right it's uh, it's required you can't have a product without a name and then you could have um you know a mes message on a, you know like that allows you to enter a product name please enter product name so that's it and then after that we essentially we could have a comma here so you could you don't there's no necessarily need but you could just add it in case uh right here we have is the name and after that we have the quantity so essentially over here we'll have the quantity quantity and over here you could see that we have colon and then over here we'll have type and here we'll have a number for the product so let's suppose number and over here required will be um required will be true and you know we could also have default value for the quantity as zero and then we could just put a comma here so essentially there's no need of commas at the end so you could just uh, for these types, but you go to only, but you should include a comma if you want to add another object here. So another property over here, like name and then quantity. Now we suppose the price of the object or the product, and the price would be a type of number and would be required, and by default it could be zero. Okay. The same thing goes for the image of the product. So you could say image, and then you could have colon, and then uh, the type would be a string, and then it would be required, which is true, and well, essentially, you could either have the image or you can't have the image. So a product could exist without an image as well. So that's basically there. And then you could just close that. That was an extra. So right, right after this object, this entire one, we put in the comma here and we put in timestamps call in true. This, what it does, it allows us to have two more extra fields and that's one is created at and updated at. So um, it's going to tell us whether when we created this, the time, uh, and then when we are latest, you know, create the latest update and it will keep me, it will be tracked. So we could, you could format document. I don't have any, uh, you know, configure. I'm going to just use prettier. This is an extension again, just used for formatting. And now, you know, you could see that this is all my, uh, you know, schema. And now we have to just allow MongoDB to use this. So we could say product. And we're going to be calling this as the model. So it's product. And we're going to say mongoose.model. We're going to use the model. And we'll say, now over here, this is going to be within the Mongo database. Now check this out. We have to make it singular because it's going to add an S all by itself in the database. And you'll see it. And you can see right now it's in capital, but in the database, it will be all lowercase. So it's going to be called products. And it's coming from the schema that we created up here. So this one, the product schema. So. We can essentially say product schema right here. And there you go. So now we have this product model and we can just import, I mean, export this. So we can say module.exports and then we have product like this. So there you go. This is the entire model for the product. And now we are going to be using this to create products in our database. Now that we have created this model, we're going to use this model to save data into our database. So we're going to go to index.js and over here, we're going to use that model. So it's very easy to use. And what we're going to do is over here, you can see that there's this connection part, right? So we're going to just leave that connection on the bottom. And over here, we're just going to use, um, you know, the slash. This is just normal. But over here, right after the slash, we could actually have, you know, the following. So we could go here. And we have app dot post, which is going to be used to save something. And in here we could have, you know, slash API slash products, right? So we could just have, uh, right now I'll just have slash API slash products. And then we have request and response. And in here we have this. Now, now check this out. Um, what we do is you can see that there's this um, completed, but there's still something missing. And that's this 
bracket over here now over here we could we could uh, use uh, you know response and you could say data received or something we could send a message right now let's just test this uh, API out does this work so slash API slash products if I go in there so I normally would assume that it's running so if I go to slash API slash products so let's go here and we'll say slash API and then we have slash products if I do this you can see over here cannot get slash API slash products the reason why I cannot get because I actually used post here and when I use post it will say data received we could actually test it out and you know we could just have something really easily uh, written now remember whatever we give into the uh, the client it's in the request so whatever the client sends is basically a request so we could have console.log and we'll have the request dot body whatever the client gives and we want to show it in the console screen right here and we also want to show it in our uh, browser so we could do it in the client end so we could say response dot send and we could have the request uh, the body right here as well. So let's see how this looks like. But we can't actually really test it out um, through the browser. So the best way to do this is either through Insomnia or the other uh, Thunder client. So over here we're in Insomnia, and what we're gonna do is you can see over here get, and then we have get API. So we're gonna have a new folder here. I'm just gonna create a new folder, and I'm gonna say post uh, right. So I'm just gonna say post, and I'm gonna create it. So you can see over here we have get, and then we have post. So I'm just gonna have this closed. Yeah. So this is open and this close uh, HTTP request. Yeah. So in here, we're going to have an HTTP request. And over here, we're going to select post. And over here, we're just going to paste in that HTTP colon for, uh, um, two forward slashes localhost port 3000. And it's called slash API slash products. Once I do this, you could see that, you know, this is coming there. And essentially, if I send, you'll see nobody return for response. The reason why it's no response, but the request has been sent, is that I don't have any body. So what I have to do is I have to give some JSON uh, values. Over here, I could actually just have you know anything I want. So 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 over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say in quotation, I could say name, and I say coding cleverly. Okay, now what is this? This is actually JSON, and I'm passing it. So it says name, and then it's also in strings. Now, if I send this, you can see this has been sent, but the body still hasn't been responded back. And you can see that the result over here is undefined. The reason why we're getting undefined here is that we're not allowed to pass JSON through our Node.js by default. We have to use a middleware. We have to configure it. And uh, the configuration setting for this middleware is super easy. Um, what we could do is we could add that middleware part. So it's basically app.use and then right after the uh, you know initialization of the app, you know, so essentially this could be over here. We could have app.use and we have express.json. And once I do this, this means now it would be able to view it. So now if, if I passed in coding cleverly, you'll see that the return was coding cleverly. And when I didn't give anything, you can see I could see an empty list. And But when I give it, you can see I could get this coding cleverly. Same goes for this now. Now, now this is not going to be anything, but you know, you, you get my point. Now, you know, we basically fixed that up. And now that's basically it. Now, instead of having, you know, that client, but client could have just added anything he wants. Like, suppose, not just the name, but you could have, <clears throat> let's suppose, value. And you could say, uh, you know, um, one, two, three. And you don't need uh, any string for that. And when you're finishing it, don't add any comma here. So now we have send. You could see now there's two things from the response, right? So this is pretty good. But what we want to do now is we want to add multiple things in here. So let's go back here. And what I want to do is I want to add it through, you know, basically I want to save the data uh, using the MongoDB um, model that we created. So we use try and catch. Okay. So we remove that and we use try and catch and we use console dot log. So for the error, it's pretty, pretty simple. You could just use console dot log or error. This is just going to show in the console screen. But other than that, I mean, right now you could see 
if uh, the, you know the, remember that console log that I was bringing now you could see it over here but now it's changed because I am actually changing it I'm using response when uh, you know I'm gonna show it on the browser and I'm gonna say if uh, you know if it's not done so we'll say a response status of 500 meaning a server error and we'll have uh, response and then we'll throw in out of JSON so we'll say dot JSON and in here we'll have an object and we'll say message and the message will be the error message like 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 this all right and then for the try now we could actually try to save that data so we're gonna have to import our model so remember this model that we created product.model.js we could do is we could just import this model here so it's pretty simple and all we have to do is const and we say model so we just say product and then we say require and then we have dot forward slash models slash product.model and you could just add in JS so that it doesn't have any kind of issues but uh, you know just a good prevention here and then once it's done here and uh, we could add in this over here so we could just say um, in the try part we could have const um, you know essentially what we want to do is we want to save this product so you want to save it and the best way to do it is await product dot create all right you're using this command and it's uh, essentially going to require a wait because it takes time and whenever you do a wait you have to put asynchronous over here okay so a s y n a s y n okay a s y n c okay async and then you have this await so await product dot create um, and whatever the request dot body was you pass it in and you basically create an a property here uh, an object um, you know for that an instance for that model so now over here we have this as a product we could just name it as product like this like like this so we have const product and then we could just return that product whenever it's created and we could say you know as a as a response json so we could say response dot status and we could say 200 meaning it's a success and the json we could just throw out the uh, product like that okay so now this is going to be really awesome because uh, for now, you can see that we have some fields which are name and quantity and price and image. So there's, there's more than, you know, there's extra fields which are time that are just automatically being created. But these are the three important ones that are like mandatory. And this is optional image field because it says required false. So let's test this out using our insomnia. So over here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new folder and we're going to be calling. Essentially, we're going to create a new folder and we're going to be calling this as add a product okay and when i do this i create this folder you can see this folder is here now in here you can see this is open and now you could essentially have this click and you say http request and you could just rename this you could just rename this over here and just call this as uh add api okay so just rename now you can see this add api and now you could just have the you know the same thing Talk, colon two forward slashes uh localhost port 3000 and then we have slash api slash so what is it slash api slash products right so whenever i do this this is that api that what is existing but it's actually a post not a get because we want to add something and in the parameters so in the parameters which is in the body so we want json right we have to click on json and over here we could just put in something like here so first of all you have to give the uh the fields now look at the fields we have First of all, name, quantity, and price. And we have name as only string. So we'll have name. And we'll say, let's suppose we want pizza. And then we'll have quantity. So we'll have quantity in the, the key is always going to be in string. So quantity. And then we have colon. And then quantity is a number. So we'll say 10. And then the price. So price like this again. And then we'll have price as, let's suppose, uh, 5.9 nine okay so now we have this which is there we could just simply press send and this should add it to it so we could press on send so now you can see over here we have these three you can see this id has been created and then there's this created at and updated at and then this underscore underscore v this indicates that it's ha it's successfully saved in the database because mongodb gives an ID, unique ID to every single object that's being created. And now we could actually reflect and check it in our database. So if we go here and we go to Browse Collections, 
you'll see that remember uh like i told you before that there's going to be um this product and then there's going to be an s in here and then this is going to be lowercase and it's going to say products right and remember that cluster name that we created which was um node api and inside here we have this products right so this was collection uh this is a collection, my bad. And then in here, we have our table, which is products. And you can see over here that our pizza is there. So that's been saved successfully, which is amazing. So this is great. We could add some more uh, products as well. Let's suppose we have pancake. So pancake. Okay. And we'll have quantity as, let's suppose, 20. And the price for a pancake is $3.99. Send it. Now we have pancakes added. Let's have, um, you know, donut, donut. Um, and uh, this would be 40 donuts. And the price for a donut is $1.99. Press send and then donut is added. Okay, great. So we have some products added. Now, if you wanna view these products, how can you see them? Well, you could see them over here. If I just, you know, click on refresh here. So if I click on refresh, you'll see the, these uh, products are being updated here. But I wanna actually have an API that allows me to you know, view these products there. So that's pretty simple as well. Just go over here. So the post was created. Now you just want one that allows you to view these um, you know, listings. So what you could do, or these you know, products. So we could do app.get. And we could just simply say slash API slash products. And then this is asynchronous. And then we have request and response. And then in, in here we have this body and then uh, essentially this close and that's it. So in here, what we're going to do is we're going to have the, you know, the, the, the area where we're going to have to retrieve it. So, and we could view it. So try and catch again, the same thing, response.status um, 500, and it's going to give a JSON, you know, object and says message error message. And over here in the try pick, place essentially you use a weight and you use product dot find you want to find everything in the database so you could use this um, bracket and whenever you use a weight there's an async automatically that has to be over there and now what you could do is const and we say products like that because it's more than one product uh, now what we could do is we could have response dot status 200 and we could just json the products and that's essentially our api that's all it that's pretty much it. Now we could use it and test it out. Over here in the this, we could go and we just create a new folder. So we could say new folder and we could say uh, get, so we'd say get all products. And then we could just create this. I mean, this is not required. This is just insomnia. So, uh, so over here we could have, you know, HTTP request. And you essentially uh, having, without having it over there, you could just, you know, you could just close these out. So you could see, you could close this folder, you could close this folder, you could close this folder, and then this is get all the products one, right? So you could click on this one, and you could say, I want, I want an HTTP. So HTTP request. Um, so you could click on this. Oh, so it just created three different HTTPs, right? So we want to delete uh, the multiple ones that it created. This is just an organized way to do it. You could use Thunder Client, it's super efficient and easy, but I'm just showing you that there's so many possibilities here. Um, and over here, what we're gonna do is, uh, you know, you could just rename this using this, and you could just say, instead of new request, you could say this as um, get API and press enter. And then in here, what you wanna do is you wanna call this API, which is HTTP colon localhost, uh, two forward slashes localhost, port 3000 and then we have slash api slash products okay and then if i press get and this press send you can see that mongodb gave me a list of objects so you can see this is a list and then inside here this is object one object two and then we have object three coming from the database this is amazing and this is how the get one is going to work but suppose if i want one individual product instead of all of them then I could use their ID to get them, right? So if I want the pizza one, I could just use this ID to get it and then this one to there and then this one for donut and this one for pancake. How do I do this? <clears throat> also pretty simple. What you could do is you could just put in an ID there, but we have to create that API for it. So over here we have this get plain one 
and in here we could just have one more which is right here on the bottom and this is just a specialized one that allows you to get a specific product depending on its id so we could have you know now essentially these call uh, these double quotes or single quotes don't matter you could add whatever you want but it's just a good practice to have the same thing whenever you're using it so don't mix it up so so over here we have um, using single quotes here for now so slash api slash products and then we have slash colon id and this is how we're going to use it so we're going to have asynchronous function request and response and then we have this um, and then we have this and then we have the semicolon and over here what we're going to do is we're going to use the same try and catch method and in the ca uh, catch we still have response Response dot status uh, dot status okay status and then we have 500 and then we have dot json and then we'll give that you know message saying that you know it's an error okay and then in the try place what you could do is you could actually get this id how are you going to get this id from the url so you might be asking like how can I get an ID from the URL? So right now, if I do this, you can see this is a list of the you know get command that we did, and this is giving us the API. Uh, I mean, API for all these uh, products and the three. But right now, it's really hard to uh, read them. You could use some kind of extension, uh, JSON Reader, uh, Chrome, right? So. If you just type in anything like this, uh, it's going to give you some cool extensions on Chrome. So this one's good, which is featured. You just add to Chrome. And when you add this extension, uh, you know, this uh, Chrome extension should be added. So JSON viewer. And once it's there, okay. So we have this extension, right? I want to refresh this page. You can see now it's essentially now in a really nice formatted portion and you can see over here they also gave us like what is the api that we called and this is the retrieval process so it's pretty nice i mean everything here is you know pretty well made so great so this is the api and like i was saying is uh like i want i want the url where i could say slash id like i want this id so suppose if i say i want this pizza and i get this id so i copy this entire id right here and I have put in the URL which is right here now how can I get this URL's ID how do I get this slash and then I get this part for that you have one specific thing and I'll tell you how to do it it's really easy and really cool it's called um, params so essentially we could use it use a destructure and we say we could get the ID from request.params if we do this we basically got the ID from the URL that's all we had to do and now we could just uh, search this in and retrieve it. So we'll say await, and we'll say product, right? So product is our model, and that find by ID is a command. So we could have that, and we pass in the ID, okay? So we pass in the ID, but we also have to now just say nothing else. And also we just have to find this, and we'll put in a const product like this, and then after that we could just retrieve that status uh, 200, and we'll say, you know, that JSON product like 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 this so that's great so now we have this product uh available as well when we go back to our browser you know you could either go through the browser and you could see that automatically it did it i just put this and then it gave me the pizza now let's just test it out using test uh you know this insomnia as well so right now this is get all products so again I could just create another one so let me just close this folder and create a new folder which is over here and we'll say um get one product okay and then create this folder and over here we got to open up this folder and make sure we have an http and in here we could just name this as um single api i just named it whatever i want and then over here we could have http colon two forward slashes localhost uh so localhost port 3000 and then we have slash api slash products because it's there's an s and then uh slash and then the id so remember the pizza id i have right here in the clipboard and what i have to do is in here it's just get so nothing else and over here i'll just send and there you go we have the pizza
So before we move on to the edit or update API, what we want to do is I just said, let's, you know, that single API where we get one product, let's just have that named as product instead of products, because this is multiple products and this will be single product. And all you got to do right now is nothing else, but just have this call to single product instead of products, because if I call it with multiple, it will get an issue and it says cannot get this. But if I go and say this, because it gave me a 404, it says it doesn't find it. But when I remove that S and I press enter, you know, it still works. So that was just pretty much what I wanted to do. And, you know, that's pretty good. Uh, you go to refresh and you could get the same kind of issue here. Uh, but when you move on to this part, which is this, you could see now this is there and, you know, everything looks really fine, which is great. It's just super awesome. Now let's go and now create the edit update API. So over here, what we're going to do is we could go to this products and right after this uh, slash API slash products, which is just uh, allowed to post a product, we could now create update API. So I'm just going to put a comment and say this is as update uh, a product. Okay. Okay. So what we could do is here, we could have app dot put put is the command to update, you could also use patch to update and this is HTTP method. So put is also used to update and patch, but we're using put and over here, we're going to have single quotes and we'll have slash API slash product. So we'll have pro, uh, product and we want to update a particular product based on its ID, right? So we could have used the ID again. And now once we have this, we have an async and request and then we could have this and then this. All right. So now what we have all of this, we could use try and catch again. And over here again, over here, we could have response dot status. Um, and then we'll have 500 and then we'll have JSON dot JSON and then we'll have um, you know, object and then we'll say message and then we say error message. Okay, that's great. But in the try, what we could do is we could essentially get the ID again from the const ID, destructure it, and then we can say equal to request.params. So this is the ID that we got. And we can use this ID to update the thing. But first of all, we have to first, uh, you know, uh, use that command. So it's await, and then we say product, and there's a specific method which is called find by ID and update. So find by ID and update. So like this. Yeah. So basically this is the command. It's called find by ID and update. And we pass in the ID and we pass in the things that we want to update. So whatever the user said in request dot, uh, request dot body, that's what you want to update it with. So essentially this is going to be like whatever the user gave, you want to update it with that. And you want to put that as the const, uh, you know, product. So this is the product like that. So this is going to be the product right after that. So if, suppose if the product hasn't been updated, if I say, you know, if the product doesn't exist or something, that means it just doesn't exist. You could say response dot, you could just say return and then this would stop the thing and it would say response dot status 404 and say message product not found, um, which is great. We found a reference to public code in a recent suggestion. Uh, but now after that, what we have is if this is not existing, I mean, if that, uh, now if it exists, what we could do, we could actually update it and we could just say product like this. But before this, uh, there's a check here because, uh, normally the product is going to be updated. So it's best to have it rechecked from the database. So you could use it either using uh, a wait again and say, uh, product. And then you say dot find by ID. Now, essentially, because it's already updated, right, it's going to be reflected in the database. So it's better to just check it again. For, so find by ID. And, and then you put in the ID over here. So let's put in the ID. Okay, so you essentially put in the ID. And now what you're going to do is const and then we say, updated product right here. And then equal it. And then we could just return. So basically response dot status 200, meaning JSON, and then updated product. So this is the API for updating a particular product based on its ID. And now we're going to be testing it. So let's over here. Um, we create another folder. So I'm just going to close this one. And you know, you can see all these folders here. And now we could have one more folder, which is going to be called update a product. Okay. And then we press enter to just create that folder. And in here, we just have this button and we have HTTP request. But in here, let's just have update API. Okay, enter. And now over here, we could just have HTTP colon two forward slashes local host 
port 3000 and then we have slash API slash product because it's not going to be S and then it's going to have its ID. So if I look into this, you could see over here it's product and then it has its ID. So we could have the pizza one. We had the pizza's ID, I believe it's this one. And now if we want to update it, we have to go and put in put. And in here we have to go in the body and we have to go in the JSON and we have to change the name or whatever we want. So let's suppose we want to change the name and we'll say and we'll say it up uh, updated. Okay. I'll say updated pizza. Okay, if I do this and I press send, now you could see that this it will return the entire thing. The reason why it's returning it is because I'm actually saying give me the entire updated product by finding it again from the database. And now you can see that it gave the name updated pizza, but other things were just the same. If I just uh, you know say okay now I want the price changed as well, and I say from five ninety nine we want the price uh, increased to seven ninety nine. Okay. Now if I do this and I press send, now you could see it's going to take some time and there you go, it's updated. So this is the API to update a particular product within the database and it's updated now successfully. And now if you want to view all the products, so you can see get all products. So you can see over here, if I click on this API, so this is a particular thing. If I just uh, you know press enter, you can see this updated pizza is there, seven ninety nine. But the pancakes and the donuts are still existing. So this is beautiful. I mean, we could go back and we got update over here. So this is the convenient part of uh, this um, you know tool, which is Insomnia or Postman, because it's really organized. Instead of having Thunder Client, Thunder Client is very simple, and you could just pa pass it in. But you know. Every tool has its own advantages and disadvantages, but you know, um, just look at for the be you know the good things of everything. So look at the good parts of Insomnia and use it. All right. So next part we're gonna do is we're gonna have the delete API. So now that we have this update uh, product, let's have the delete product. So right here uh, we're gonna have slash delete. Okay. So we're gonna have delete a product like like this and then over here we have pretty simple uh, method for delete it's just called app.delete this is the option and then in here we're going to have slash api slash product and then what id you want to put pass in so you pass in the id like colon id and then you want to uh, put an asynchronous function so a s y n c and then you have request and response and then put in this and then this okay and then put in this now, if you want to delete something, it's pretty again simple. You have try and catch, and then here you could just have uh, response dot status uh, five hundred, and then you could say um, you know dot uh, JSON response, and then put in the message, and then just say you know th there was an error, like 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 this. Or else, if you want to try to delete it again, use the const id destructure it from the request params, and then um, what you're going to do is right after destructuring it from the request params, you could use it using await, and then um, you know await, and then you say product. Um, so basically, oh man, what did I open? So what I, if I do product dot find? Uh, you know, it's basically find by id and delete. So find by id and delete and then you pass in the id and essentially you want to uh, you know you delete it like this so that's pretty much it and then uh, once it's deleted you could just have the product saved again uh, just return the response of it so and just say that you know this product has been deleted or just given the information that this this was the product that was deleted to the response and then you could just say okay response okay so for instance we have to put a check first if the you know the product doesn't exist so if the product doesn't exist so so what we're going to do is we're going to throw out the return and then we say response dot status and then we have 400 uh, you know 404 and then we'll have dot json and then we'll have the message of you know process not, product not found and then you know if everything is fine we have response dot status 200 and then we'd have product deleted successfully uh, which is great um, and you could also just have the product uh, you know displayed or something but uh, you really don't want the product so you could just have you could just have it like like this okay so now we could just format document like this and you could see this is our delete API which is right here so this is our delete API now it's just time to test it so right here you can see that there's um, no product here so that's the only uh, reason I was putting it so I think it's best to have it uh, so const product wait a minute product okay okay it's okay so now this is okay that it tells us whether it's not and then after that it's just going to delete it 
Great. So now let's uh, test it. So we go to Postman. Uh, we don't have to go to Postman about Insomnia. And over here, we could just create another folder. Just close all these things out. So you could just have this closed and this closed. And just create a new folder here. So we say create a folder and we say uh, delete delete a product. Okay. So we have delete a product like this. And then in here, we have HTTP and we have um, so delete API, right? And then over here we'll have HTTP uh, colon two forward slash localhost uh, localhost port 3000 slash API slash product. And then we could put any product we want. Let's put our, uh, uh, you know, famous pizza and we'll have, uh, you know, the post option, which is, oh, I mean, sorry, not the post, but the delete option here. And then all that's we have to pass in and then press send. And you can see over here, message says product deleted successfully. If you go to get all products, you know, over here, the folder and get API, this is the get API saved over here. So we just send it once more. And now you can see, now we don't have pizza anymore, but we have pancakes and donuts. So let me know how you thought about this. If you have any questions, uh, like if you want to add more pro products into this, just add them quickly with that, you know, add a product API, which is right here and just add them quickly and easily within here, this. And then it would just be updated here. Let's suppose we want to add one more, let's suppose, uh, cheesecake. And if I say, um, so let's say 100 and then, um, 499. Now, if I send it, now the cheesecake is added there as well. Okay. So now you could see if I, you know, view all the products, uh, which is over here, which is in the get all products. Now I send it. Now you can see pro pancake, a donut, and then cheesecake is right here, which is amazing. Now this is uh, the APIs, the simple CRUD APIs, create, read, update, delete. I wanted to say that, you know, you could actually have Postman, Insomnia, and all these other products. So it's pretty simple over here as well. So this is Postman. And what you can do is you basically create a collect, uh, you know, workspace here. So um, essentially you could add in, you know, things like my environment, environments, and, you want to add a new HTTP, right? And then once you do that, you could just paste in your, you know, HTTP. So suppose if you want to use this, you know, this one, this is allowed to view everything. Just paste it right here, press send. And you could see now a response came here. So you could see you got a response here. So you could see one, two, and three over here. And one other thing that I wanted to say is that suppose you want to add products, right? So you have added API, but instead of adding it through JSON, you want to add it through, suppose, some other format, like a form URL like this, right? So in a form URL, you basically put in uh, just a key and value. So suppose name, and then I want, so the, this is like, yeah, this is the name, and then I want something like uh, something, let's suppose I want uh, chocolate, chocolate add. Yeah. So add, so I have name chocolate and then I have price and I would say, um, you know, three ninety nine, And then I have the last parameter, which I guess was, um, quantity. So quantity, it doesn't matter which order it's coming from, but I as long as they match. So let's suppose, uh, 35. Okay. So this is chocolate. I want to send this. I can't do this product validation failed name please enter product name now the reason why this is happening and there's like 500 internal server error is that our middleware isn't configured for adding these other things uh the you know this form field so you know adding this form way you know you, you form url encoded uh, method of adding things and you could just configure it within the uh, middleware so right here where it says uh, express.json you could say app.use and then you could have uh, express dot url encoded and then you know you could have the you could have the round brackets and then the braces and say extended colon false if i do this now you could add this thing as well so let's just send it again and now you could add it so chocolate has been added and now to view all these products you could see over here where we view all the products uh add get api so in the get API for press send now, so we get pancake, donut, 
and then we have cheesecake and then we have chocolate all right so that is amazing which is really awesome now i wanted to do a little bit advanced and i wanted actually to structure this out a little better because right now to be honest we have everything cluttered within index.js and if we had more and more apis created we have, would have to make our index.js very very populated which is a not which is really not a good practice at all so the best way to do this is essentially have everything separated out in really good uh, folders and this is what i uh Highlight, highlighted out in one of my videos so what i would do is right now i'm in the models which is great we have a separate one but over here we have to have these apis so you can see slash api slash get and they're all related to products right so you can see this one's related to product this one's related to product this one's related to a product this one's related to a product and this one's related so we have all these apis that are related to a product so mostly we have to create a separate route for this so so what i'm going to do is right now uh, you could see that um, we're going to create one route over here. So over here, we'll have a folder and we'll say routes. So not in here, not in the model, but let's uh, collapse everything. And basically, we're in the root directory and we'll, we'll create a folder called routes. Okay. So in this, we'll create a file. Uh, and it's going to be called, um, it's going to be called product route, uh, product dot route dot js all right this is going to be the product route okay so essentially this is for the products so basically you could call it um yeah so you could just call it product.route.js and all the routes uh, that are leading to that product will be there existing So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to have, you know, these APIs. So if you could see over here, we have <coughs> this all there, right? Delete. So this delete is there. This update is there. This uh, post is there. And then this get is there. So there's two posts, I believe. So this one and then there's this one. Okay, there's get and then there's this get. Okay, so yeah exactly so there's just one post because we have to add one product and then there's two gets okay so what we want to do is we want to add the url routing here so what is what it is like it's basically right after you know this slash this is normal it's really doesn't matter so right after that you could add in so essentially right after this so you don't even need uh you know so app.get right here, you could just add in, so even after this, I mean, just right after the middleware configuration, what you could do is, um, you could say app dot use. Okay, so I'm just gonna call this as routes and what what is this is going to be called middleware so you just have to separate the things out over here so routes and over here app.use i'm going to have the route which is basically slash api slash products so you can see over here there's a similarity here so uh that's why we're going to use pro whatever slash api slash products go we're going to take it to the product route so product dot route dot you know whatever that product route is. So I'm just gonna call this as product route. Now, right right here. Now this is not imported, so essentially I have to create the route. Okay, to make this file more distributed and more organized, I would recommend having product.route.js here. And in here, remember all of these routes that we created for product, just name them as S so that they have this common trait. So I'll just put all S over here. So you'd see products, delete, and then slash API slash products. So over here was, um, you know, delete and update. And then you'll see then in the get for a single product, we'll just have this as as well. And this is for, uh, you know, adding a product. And then we have, um, basically that's it. So this is just for getting the product. And then this is there. And this is for adding a single product. So what we're gonna do is over here, we're gonna use this app.use and then slash API slash products. And then we have the product route. Now this is the product route, which is right here right so 
what we're going to do is over here we have in the product route we're going to have to create this router so you see this router and then this router will point to other things like suppose router dot get and then we have uh you know just forward slash because right now at the moment what you could see is um slash api slash product so by general uh, means this one has to be called right this one has to be called which is uh just getting the products and displaying it so i'm saying by general the general one which is the slash one right so this one should have uh should have should have uh you know request response and then you know you could just say something like that it really doesn't matter i mean at the moment uh, uh you basically could have this thing there so this entire thing could essentially go here and this means like now it's asking for the product right where's this product from so that's all you have to import cons product so we say so product and this is from the model and and this await is going to be for this asynchronous over here okay and that's basically it this is how this model is going to be called it's still going to work but a better way to do this is actually add this with logic this thing this entire thing is called a controller function and you could add this separately in another file which is going to be called a controller so if i go here into this folder okay so over here and if i go here and i go in controller okay, controllers and in here we could add in a a uh, separate file which is going to be called product dot controller dot js all right so over here you could add in this entire thing this entire snippet this one okay so essentially you don't need this entire snippet at all so all of this could just be cut okay and then over here would just be a function but at the moment i'm just gonna tell you what to do just leave it like this as for now but let's go here and in the controller in the product controller what we would do is we have const get products is going to be the function and then we'll have is uh async request response and remember that the thing that i copied so let me just add this rem remove that remember that's async or request and response we ba we basically need only this so rest everything you could just delete so this could just be deleted and right here you would just paste this try and catch now it's going to be asking like where's this uh product coming from you could just say okay const product uh this is coming from there uh and essentially this is your function if you want to export this function so that you could use it you would just have um the following line added at the end so you could just say um yeah so essentially you you could just say module module dot exports and then you you could pass in a list of what you want to export so you know right now at the moment we just have this get products being exported so now you could use this get products here so you could just have this uh route and in here we could have um const that product controller and then that's coming from product.controller.js okay and then over here we could use uh that function so essentially you're getting product.controller and you're essentially you could get the the structure and over here you could see that there's this get products so we could just say get products we're getting the function get products from that and we could use it over here so get products right here okay so now that this is there you know you can see that this has been added which is success now you wouldn't you would want to do the same thing process for all the other routes so like like suppose if i uh, you know go to this other one which is this was just getting all the products we'd have router dot get and this is so simple like suppose uh, forward slash and then we'd have uh, you know over here colon id so colon id so this means we have now router for a specific id right we're getting only that and then now you could understand this through this you could see it slash api slash products and then whatever now this is going to be an id in the url so right 
right after that slash API slash products. And then you could have, uh, you know, get single product function instead of get multiple product. And what you're going to have to create this function. So we have to create this function in here. So all we got to do is, you know, const, uh, you know, get single product. So product. And then again, this is an asynchronous function. So asynchronous. And then we have request response. And then we have, you know, this semicolon. And you could just add in, you know, the things that you need. So essentially, the index.js has the single function as well. So over here now, you basically don't even need this now. This API is deleted because we already added it from there. And now I'm going to just, you know, one by one finish all of them. And then it's just going to be using this route to do all of this handling. So right now, product.route is also not being exported. So product.route is going to be exported through this function. I mean, this this line, which is module, uh, module dot exports, and then we have router. All right. So once we do this, we could actually simply import product route uh, on the top. So, so if I go into this, I could just have the you know router imported on the top right here. So over here, I could say um, const product route, and then we have uh, routes and product.route.js and then this is basically the product route which is right here so this is perfect all everything is synced properly and now we just have to create this product get product so we just get this you know get this i this code and we just copy this and we put it in this get product which is right here once everything is done we could just have this um, get product like this okay so once we have that we could now we could now um, go back to this route and you could you know you could actually call it from here so we'll get product simple and now there that's populated so now we have these two apis so by that you know we had five i mean we had a total five so now three are left so let me just quickly add the last three um and one was simple which was the create one which is router dot post and that's used to create. So this is also a forward slash, just a simple one. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a post product. So uh, it's going to be basically create product function. Um, so we could have create product over here, create product function. And we have to, uh, you know, make this product function over here. So over here, we could just have const create product. Okay. And then we have is equal to async and then you could see all of this populated and you could see that it's basically creating that product here so this uh slash api slash products this is this is already the old one we could just remove this and this is the creating one so you could see that almost it's the same thing but i'm just gonna s double check if there's anything different i believe it's almost the same thing so i'm just gonna copy this it's believe yeah almost look the same so you could just remove this now safely and you're going to essentially go here and this, uh, you know, create product is created. So you just use it right here. So comma, um, create product. And then what you want to do here is you want to, you know, you could just have this. There's also this part over here. You could just go here and control and space and then press enter. That's basically as the create product here. And the same thing goes for the next one, which is the update, pro you know, update a product. So you just add a update a product right here. Remember that uh, update a product. So essentially it is also router dot. Now how to update, remember put. And then um, when we want to update something, we have to actually have its ID. So call in ID and then uh, we'd have, you know, the function which is called update a product. So update product okay will be the function and we don't have it right now so we'll just have to add it right here so it's pretty simple again all we got to do is const update a product update product and then what we could do is async again is equal to async request and response and then we just put in this semicolon right here and then over here we just want to put in the update a product so this this thing will just go in which is this entire thing Okay, just copy this entire thing and bring it in here. So like that. And now uh, once this is there, you could just remove this entirely. So this update a product is removed successfully from this index.js. Uh, and this should be essentially like that. 
Okay, so now we have that and you know, it's complaining. So just go here and press control and space. Okay, it's not giving me any suggestion because it's not exported through that list, right? So we have to go back here and we have to add this through the list. So we'll have comma and then we'll have update product. And now it's gonna give me the suggestion. So it's gonna go here and there's control space and then there you go. The last one is delete one. So it's basically called delete delete a product and then over here it's router dot delete and then we have its id so slash colon id and then we have the delete product function okay and then normally we have to do the same thing over here so we have to go here um, right after this function we have const delete product okay and then we have async uh, async request response and then we have this we could put in again the same thing from index.js this this thing will be from here all the way to this catch so copy this entire thing and just paste it right here also you could just remove this entirely now you don't need this delete as well and you could just you know clear it all so essentially now we just have this single route so look how clean this index.js has gotten now what we have to do is just finalize everything um, so over here we have this delete and uh, over here we're just going to have comma and then we'll have delete product and over here we'll just put in the delete product so we make sure we have um, control and space and then delete okay great so now that everything is there I mean it's imported over here and it should be working slash API slash products um, so everything seems to be fine and uh, you know we have format document just to make it a little formatted and let me just show you a little zoomed out view so this is the uh, you know the delete controller this is the update uh, product controller and then the create up product controller get product controller get products controller so you can see that this is all requiring model and this is all working so if I there's a common uh, js module it can, can be converted to an es model so it's it's okay man i mean you could use the um es6 kind of way of doing it but you know we're fine with this but you know everything looks good and uh, we have these routes that are configured in the product.route and these are all going to call these functions so you can see if i just normally do get and then i'll call the get products if i normally have get with this id i'll get the get product function uh, different from the get products function and if i have a normal uh, url of, of slash api slash products uh, then it would have uh, with a post method it will create a product for me and if i have an slash api slash products with an id and it's a put method it's going to go to the update product method which is right here and if i go and do a slash api slash products uh with a with an id with a, and it's a delete method i go to the delete product and basically it will delete the product for me so this is pretty really i mean really convenient and organized looks very nice and this is how it's professionally done so you can see over here that we have all of this done middleware routes and then this is just normal you know testing hello from node api and this is our connection so let's go and see if this is uh still running and you can see that the database and server is still running let's go and now what we're going to do is we're just going to add in a product again again nothing has been majorly updated or changed so we could just go to um back to our you know that API, let's suppose I go to add one product. So add a product. So you can see I could go add a product. So over here we have slash products, right? You can add through form or we're gonna also through JSON. So I'm just gonna have through form again. Um, and let's have, let's say um, we have juice, okay? And uh, juice is for $5.99. The quantity for well, what I do, okay. The quantity for juice is one uh, 100 or let's say 210. I don't know. So let's send it, and now you can see juice is added. I mean, nothing happened. I mean, that's everything is working, okay. So if juice is added, can we view all these? So then just copy this, and you could actually view it in their browser as well. So if you do this, you could see that all these lists are working i mean it didn't basically impact the api performance of pancake donut cheesecake chocolate and juice have all been there nothing is being broken and nothing seems to break everything seems to work so you could see if i want to um add uh this is the add so get api so if i just send you can see now all of these things are being populated here if you want to you know delete anything suppose I don't really want you know cheesecake I could just get this ID first of all let's copy this 
and we can actually update the ID as well. Right now, try to update pizza. It's not going to allow you because uh, it can't find it, 404, right? We could put a really good message over there, and that's something that I want you to put a message using, you know, response. But right now, you can see that this is the, now I changed it to the updated, uh, so cheesecake, so cheese, I'll just write it, and then the price, and then I press, okay. So now over here, we have slash, API slash products. Now this is important. Now whenever I, when I you know I did the organized way to do the route and controller, I changed all of them from now. So everything has now a slash API slash products. Now if I do this, you could see that the cheesecake has been updated, and you could view this uh, cheesecake by using get API, and this would uh, basically send it. And you could see over here pancake donut updated cheese. Okay, and then we have chocolate. If you want to delete the cheesecake. Uh, you could just have this, you know, from here with the ID passed in. But again, the product will be changed to products. And this is the delete method. And now if I press send, you can see product deleted successfully. And if I want to review all the products, so I'll do here and I press send again. And you can see pancake, donut, chocolate, and juice. So one final thing I wanted to do was to add this into GitHub. So this code that I added, I wanted all of this to be populated on GitHub. So what we could do is we could go to github.com. So what we could do is essentially, I'll go to my GitHub account. So, and then over here we have this plus button and create a repository. And we'll, you know, we'll call it simple. Uh, so we'll say simple crud app. And we'll say backend. Okay, and then over here we'll have it public, and we'll create a repository. And then over here we could just initialize using this command. So make sure you have that. So what you could do is this is the uh, directory here. You could just go and do cmd. This opens up the command prompt. You could have the following uh, commands typed. So first, the first command is I would. Uh, you know, I'll just turn off this because we don't need this for now. And now what we're going to do is we could just go here and uh, first, man, so we could go here. Okay. And what we could do first is we could have git init, which is initializing the git. Um, and then after that, we have git add all the files. So we just say git add everything. Okay. Now I didn't have to do uh, slash, but dot. Okay. So this means I added everything. Then after that, I do git commit. I have an M and I say first commit. All right. So you could just do any message you want. I just do. Okay. Now after that, we want git branch hyphen M and then hyphen M and then we have main branch. Okay. So now this is on the main branch. Then I want to git remote uh, add origin and I have to put in the URL of that repo. So basically just copy this uh, and you have to put it in the URL path here. So right there. So git remote add origin. And then once you have everything finalized, you just do git push hyphen new origin and then main. If you do this and press enter, this would update this on GitHub. So now you could see that everything is on GitHub, which is great. And you could see one other thing that node modules isn't existing here. And the reason why I did that was because I put it in this, uh, you know, dot git ignore. And you can see that git ignore didn't include the node modules, which is pretty heavy and bulky, and you don't want that. And you could also put in your, you know, dot env variables, your credentials, and all this stuff will could go in the uh, dot env file. And then you could put it in the dot env in the dot git ignore. So, yeah, these are the things um, and precautions. I'll put this link into the uh, description. So, thank you so much for watching.